Gwen family, good morning po sa inyo lahat. Happy first Sunday. Amen. Good morning po sa inyo lahat. Pag-start na po tayo to serve God on our highest praise. Let's all stand up and read our uh, verse for today. It will be flashed on our screen, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty hand. Praise Him for His mighty works. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him with a lot Praise Him with a tambourine and a dance. Praise Him with the strings of peace. Praise Him with the clash of symbols. Praise Him with loud clarity symbols. Let everything that has breath sings praises to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's all start by giving thanks to the Lord. Amen po ba?
discouraged but our faith sees a God who can lift up us in the pit of despair. This is our steady ground on the world. If he did it last year or the past months, I know the Lord will do it again and turn your lives and give you what your hearts desires.
give us the assurance that you are our rock when everything else is sinking sand. Shield us, O oh Lord, and bind us with your love and presence. Brothers and sisters, there are 365 days in a common year. Let's not forget that also there are 365 verses in the Bible that says, Do not fear. When the doctor report comes your way, do not fear. When your relationship hits a rocky period, do not fear. When your faith seems to be weak, do not fear. If you start worrying about your children, do not fear. If your business is struggling, do not fear. When your mental hurt health starts to turn to take a turn, do not fear. No matter what situation comes your way, for there are 365 days in a year, there are 365 reasons not to fear. Amen. Every day.
even though we are all sinners, but He doesn't look in that way. He wants us to come back. He wants us to go back to Him. And He's giving us many, many opportunities to go back. But today, my question is, where is your faith? Is it there? Or it's, it's running out? Or is that this small? It says in the Word, right? As long as you have small as a mustard seed, you can move mountains. But did God told you that? God told you, you already moved the mountain. If you have a, that faith in your heart, I don't want to say this, brothers and sisters. If we don't have that faith, shame on us. God's faithfulness in each and every one of us. That He gave His Son to all of us. Because He has faith in all of us. The day approaching, brothers and sisters. The days are approaching. The days are coming. Are you ready? Is your faith, is, with, is it your faith still in your possession? Is it your faith still on what you accomplish? Or is your faith is with God? Because ever since God created everything, the faithfulness of God is there. And His faith will never change to each and every one of you. But he is asking, brothers and sisters, where is your faith? Our faith is with God and God alone. Hallelujah. Lord, truly great is your faithfulness. That your faithfulness will never change. You will never change what you promised for us since day one. It will never change. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Though season change, though people change, but your promise will never change. That's how your faithfulness reached in every one of us. And my prayer, Father, that your people Make their faithfulness in you, Lord God. Give their self to you, Lord God. Surrender their hearts to you. Because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. Thank you, Lord Father, for bringing me in this place. For making me stand in your people that truly I cannot post this thing because you are the one who put me here. And I don't care what people will say anymore. My heart is in you, Lord God. My faith is in you, Lord God. Amen. People will judge each and every one of us. But it doesn't matter, Lord God. Because when you come, you are the great judge. I want to be on the book of life and I believe all the people who are here wants to be the book of in the book of life but the thing is they have to earn it they have to work for it and surrender everything to you father it's not by our works it's not by our deeds your God but it's our faith in you your God are the grace that you brought us, Lord God, that you gave us, Lord God. So we are saved by grace through faith. Father, humble us, Lord God. Humble all of us, Father, so that we will see and we will receive your faithfulness, your love for each and every one of us. We are blindness of our arrogance, Lord God. We are blindness of our own self Lord God, our selfishness, Lord God, make us 
see, Lord God. Open our eyes, not the, the physical eyes, but our hearts, Lord God. To see, Lord God, that you are the one who made us here. So without you, we are nothing, Lord God. Truly, we are nothing, Lord God. Like I said, Lord God, I don't care, Lord God, what people will say to me. I care about you, Lord God. And now the more and more I walk with you, I will share your word to your heart. This is, this is my calling. And your people has a calling as well, Lord God. Show it to them, Lord God. Show it to them. Reveal it to them, Lord God. And the days are coming that we need more and more to share your words to your people, especially to the lost, Lord God. That we need to repent, to surrender everything, Father. Hallelujah. Just want to thank you and honor you, Father. Thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. Praise God. Can someone open the lights? Thank you. Amen. So, good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right. Did you have your breakfast today? Good morning, everybody. God is good? All the time? There you go. Dapat be excited tayo every day, no? I know some of you are tired, no? Especially that the, the people moved yesterday. It's a challenge. But praise God. Praise God, for God is your strength. Amen? Praise God. So I would like to call on who's going to do the tithes and offering today. Is my... Ah, you? Ah? Oh, oh nga pala. Praise God. See? Sensya na kayo, ha? I would like to call on the kids. Oo nga. Hallelujah. Yan ang kailangan ko. Reminder. <laughs> kids! Come on! Look at the new bombs. <laughs> Hallelujah, Lord God. Welcome back! Oh, Bembem, -bem, oh. Wow! Dami nila? Yeah, let's pray. Come on. Let's give a, let's give a pop of for them, right? Thank you for your parents and for your time that you are here today, every Sunday, truly. Hallelujah. Let's all uh, raise our hands and pray for them. Lord, thank you, Lord God, for this wonderful day, Lord God, that your kids, these kids, Lord God, are getting grown bigger and bigger, Lord God. Lord God, because you are blessing them. Thank you, Lord God, for the blessing, for this wonderful blessing, Lord God, that through their parents, Lord God, even to this church, Lord God, that you gave us. Lord God, this wonderful kids, Lord God. May you bless them continuously, Lord God. May you give them more wisdom in their hearts, Lord God. They are children, Lord God. But if people, teachers will train them to grow, Lord God, in the way that they should be, Lord God, they will flourish, Lord God. They will share your words, Lord God, to other people, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. May you bless them. May you continue, Lord God, to father them, Lord God, with your loving arms, Lord God, with your loving uh, comfort, Lord God. May you bless the teachers that they will, the, the one will uh, teach to them, Lord God. May you give them wisdom and understanding, Lord God, especially the patience, Lord God, that these kids, Lord God, like we always say, kids will be kids, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, and may you be the one be in the midst of their uh, life group, Lord God, in their ministry, Lord God. Thank you. We just want to lift everything back to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, kids. Welcome back, Bam Bam. Yeah. You, teacher, assistant. Huh? Huh? 
Ha, may ingay kayo? Sige, mag-iingay din ako. Eh, okay lang. Sige. Alright. So, I would like to call on Sis Mai Mai now. Amen. something like from the Ten Commandments, say, thou shalt not kill, or honor thy father or mother. But um, Jesus summarized um, the Law and the Prophets, or the Old Testament, into two commandments, and that is to love God with all your mind, with all your soul, um, with all your strength. And the second is to love your neighbor, neighbor as you love yourself. Um, so the Bible also gave us um, the definition of what love is, and that is not a love that we feel. It's a love that we do. Love is patient. Love is being kind. So one of it is being kind. Um, I asked Jacob yesterday to uh, give me a definition of kindness, and so he searched it from Wikipedia, and it says here, Kindness is a type of behavior marked by acts of generosity, consideration, rendering assistance or concern for others without expecting praise or reward in return. And I remember um, a college, uh, a friend of mine in the Philippines who told me, who, who uh, of whom his teacher in college also told him, and it's his motto in life, that kindness or goodness is a reward on its own. So when, we're, when we are being kind to others, even if we don't expect a physical um, return to us, it's already a feeling that we feel within ourselves whenever we help others because somehow we alleviate someone's you know, pain and suffering. Um, and one of this also says that without expecting praise or reward in return, and that is why um, Jesus also said that so when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and on the streets to be honored by others. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So this is one way of really earning reward. Because Jesus said, do not store up for yourselves riches on earth where the vermin, the moths, or the termites will destroy, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. So this is one way of doing so. So we are encouraged to give to the church so that in doing so, we are able to maintain this space. We are able to have fellowship. We are able to use the resources in order to help the kids grow in their um, spirituality. And also the youth and as well as for everyone. Um, and so with that, let us bow our heads to pray. Dear Father in heaven, O loving God, most generous, we are just grateful for all your gifts that you have given us. Um, dear Father, always remind us... Um, that this gifts came from you. And so in doing our tithes and offerings, just giving back what you already provided for us. Help us to give uh, a generous heart and give us um, a heart um, that is giving also to others. This we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And, and um, for the um, announcement for today, so you can give in two things. One is... Um, through e-transfer um, via the email address in here. And also second is um, um, donation through the box at the back. Um, so some other announcements. So there would be a, a men's fellowship. So encouraging all men from 18 years old and above to attend. So it will be um, today. Uh, today at uh, 1 p.m. Uh, in the church in here. And then um, there would also be a, a youth fellowship um, this coming Friday, um, Junior Youth and Youth. It's, it will be 7 p.m. So parents are also um, requested if you're able to drive your kids. Um, it would be a huge help. Um, also on uh, Saturday, there will be a um, breakfast.
breakfast pancake, it will be on April 13, so this coming Saturday morning at 8 a.m. So, um, th these are the details. Um, so, please bring cash or interact is also accepted. Are we um, inviting L5 to that? Yeah. 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 Yes. Um, yeah, so, yeah, we are encouraged to invite others as well. Um, and then, after you feel full, in the afternoon, there will be a singer and musician workshop. So, the, the, the worship team will be hosting a singers and musician workshop. Uh, it is open to all who are interested in learning how to sing and play musical instruments. So this is also one way of giving back to God with our talents. So um, we are all encouraged. And then um, there will be a Win Canada Church Conference. So registration is is now open. Um, you can visit the, the website of Win Canada Church for this item. And also for fundraising, um, Please support the fundraising for Winter. So I think today we have the um, Polvoro, Niema, and Castillas. So yeah, you can approach a chili oil as well. Okay. Uh, so it's um, located at the pantry. After the service. After the service. Okay. <laughs> Actually, today is the first Sunday, right? Yeah. First Sunday of the month. Siguro, mas maganda yun na natin yung ano, no? Sige, today let's take our communion before the message. Wow. Time flies, right? It's now April. All right. Ready. All right. So we're doing this. We're doing this part. Yes, as we all know that we have, we have, uh, that Jesus Christ ex, uh, started this with his disciples. Well, what, what we're doing with this one is to remember the, how the gratitude that we have for Christ, right? Remembrance of, and gratitude for the Lord. Communion serves as a solemn moment for believers to reflect. Amen, Puba. Reflects on Jesus Christ's sacrifice and express gratitude for the profound redemption of forgiveness of sins achieved this crucifixion and resurrection. And it, it is also unity for each and every one, especially for us believers. It is an act of communion signifies that the unity among believers in the body of Christ, illustrating shared faith, fellowship, and communal bond. So that's what we are doing here to remember God's goodness in our life. That Christ demonstrates the love of God through his resurrection, through his death and resurrection, through the sacrifice that he has given to us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26, it says, For us, for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So that's the reason why we are doing this. Are you expecting the Lord? Amen. 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 We should be. We should expect the Lord. That's why as believers, we have to do this. That's why when we take this, come on, brothers and sisters, this is not a tradition thing. This is doing, we're doing this with the heart. Amen po ba? We're doing this because the Lord sacrifice in this world is never, would never forget. And He never forget each and every one of us. That's why His faithfulness in each and every one of you is still there. 
This is the least that we can do. I have to remember him. So let's partake the bread. And the drink. Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord God, for this day, Lord God, that truly your faithfulness is in every one of us, Lord God. Thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, that we always remember what he did on the cross for each and every one of us, for the humanity, Lord God, that we are here today standing in front of you, Lord God, giving thanks, our gratitude, Lord God. We always need to thank you every day in our lives, Lord that's truly, Lord God, that we do, Lord God, because every day we live our life for you, Lord God, because you are our life, and we live only for you. We just want to thank you today, Lord God. May your message be, Lord God, upon in, uh, in this church, Lord God, your people, Lord God, that I will share whatever, Lord God, you are, you want to share to each and every one of us. Thank you, Lord God, and we love you, and we just want to give you praise and honor. Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> All right. So the message today is short. I just wanna. So I just wanna. No, no. But before that, I would like to. Who's the Who's the first timer here? Who's the first first timer? Oh, praise God. Merhaba. <laughs> Merhaba. <laughs> Uh, uh, what's your name? Dennis. Dennis? Ah, I na Filipino. Amen. I was fake. But praise God. Bro Dennis, welcome. Welcome to Win Nova Scotia. And you're the brother? Who who brought you here? Oh, okay, so church mates, so uh, welcome bro, ha? welcome, welcome. Si ano pala eh, hindi bumiimik yung katabi mo eh. Oh. Praise God, uh, welcome to the church. And like I always says, it's not an accident that you are here today. So thank you, God bless. And who wants to give him thanks to praise the Lord today? Eric? Okay, later. We'll do that. Who wants to give thanks and praise the Lord today? Anyone? Before we call on Brother Eric when he comes back. Huh? What huh? Okay. Amen. Uh, good morning po. Nagpapasalamat po ako sa Panginoon unang-una sa mga tumulong po sa amin kahapon. And I remember um, Eric lost his brother just last year. Okay, only brother. Yeah. And actually, I was looking at this five or six men yesterday, and I'm so touched because the Lord replaced that brother. Multiply po talaga ng Panginoon. And Eric was so thankful about it. And every time he prayed, um, he really cried and thanked God about you guys how you accept him, how you love him, kahit, kahit uh, Canadian siya, ano na siya, pusong Pinoy na siya ngayon. So, um, nagpapasalamat ko ako sa Panginoon. It really encouraged him to pursue and yung relationship niyo po sa kanya, sa amin po, it actually um, helps him to get closer to, to God. Thank you so much po. Thank you, Thank you, Chief. Yeah, I just want to praise and thank the Lord for the wind movers. Amen. Amen. I know th their their patience were tested yesterday. <laughs> but praise God. No one no one uh what do you call this? The impatience are not there. The enemy didn't didn't win. Because the enemy is there. I believe. The enemy is there. But praise God that uh, this mighty man didn't 
Resist, I mean, they resist the enemy. Amen? Bro, it's your turn. You probably already shared. <laughs> yeah, but you can share. No, I, uh, I just wanted to praise God and thank God for uh, these beautiful men who uh, gave up their time and their talent and their treasure yesterday to uh, come and help us move. And uh, truly, it was a, such a blessing to us. Even we had a mishap. We got the uh, truck stuck in about two feet of mud and dirt and no place to uh, get a tow truck in there to get it out. And I said, Lord Jesus, how are we going to get out of this? Because uh, there's really no no way that I could see where we could get it out. Anyway, so I immediately had a thought to call a guy that I knew, Corey, who had done some work for me before, who has an excavator, and to come. And, and uh, so I called him up and said, Corey, I'm in a jam in here. I, I need help. And he came right away. Two minutes. He had us out. And uh, praise God. So uh, we're here. We're moved. And uh, praise and thank the Lord for, for these guys. Uh, and they truly are a blessing to us. And I also want to say praise and thanks to the Lord for something else. I was, uh, we have a friend, uh, Rachel Mushala, who is uh, in uh, Kenya. She's a prophet. She's a woman of God. And she had a very powerful word this morning connected to what you were saying. Uh, she was saying that, uh, you know, many people, there are many people, um, the Lord's heart is broken and he, because there's, there's no people to do his work. And she said, what do you mean, Lord? There's, there's so many that want to serve you. And he said, yeah, they want to serve me, but they want to serve me by telling humans what they want to hear and not the, not the hard truth. And you remember in, in the Gospel of John when, when uh, Jesus said some things and, and the, the, the disciples came and, and they, couldn't, they couldn't receive his message. And, and then he said, do you want to leave too? And they said, Lord, where do we go? You have the only words that lead to eternal life. So it was a strong message. It was a powerful reminder that sometimes, you know, that what the Lord wants to speak is not always what we want to hear, but it's always designed to save our life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, bro. Actually, how powerful the Holy Spirit is. Last Friday, that's their message. That's whose message? The youth. Wow. Yeah. When the people left Jesus Christ, right? Am I right? Am I correct? I was here on last Friday, and I told them, I told Jiba, that's a powerful message. Because your, your message is your message, and the message today. It's God's message. Yeah. I mean, God's yeah, it is God's message, but through, through the people, He will use people to... Yeah. I never share stuff like that. Wow. But it, ju it just hit me this morning. Wow. It, even me. That's why I was praying... Lord, to be honest with you, I was struggling what to preach today. I told you that. That's why I was I wasn't with them yesterday. Cause the Lord, what I said, Lord, what's what's I'm gonna what I'm gonna share today? But the Lord spoke. This month, it's about faith. It's about faith. We're gonna do that. Cause people needs to. What? To encourage their faith. To build their faith. Right? And even today, the songs that we sang, how great God's faithfulness Amen. to each and every one of us. Even though we're not faithful, God's still faithful in our lives. Don't get me wrong. Not all of us experience this, but it doesn't matter. Whatever you are having, whatever you are receiving, good or bad, whatever you're struggling with, God's still faithful. Right? All you have to do is confirm that faithfulness in your life. Amen. So today, uh, like I said, this month, let's do the message it's like regarding faithfulness. Faith in humanity. Amen? Faith, everything will go, will fall into place. 
So today, the message today will be when faith does not waver. Right? When faith does not waver. Can we all stand? There you go. All right. So, this is the call of Abraham. Amen? Let us all read together. Ready? One, two, three. The Lord had said to Abraham, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham, come on, continue. So Abraham went, as the Lord had told him, come on. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife, Sarah, his nephew, Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated, and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abraham traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Moreh and Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared. Amen. So praise God. In 8 to 9, from there he went on toward the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and I at the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Then Abraham set out and continued towards the Negev. Amen. Lord, thank you, Lord God, for this powerful message that you have given us, Lord God. Truly, Lord God, whatever you promise in each and every one of us, you will fulfill it, Lord God. It's a matter of giving our faith, Lord God, and giving our trust in you, Lord God. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord God, and we bless these people, Lord God, that the word that we will utter, Lord God, that I will utter to them, Lord God, is your word, Lord God, and may be fruitful in each and every one of us, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, and this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. amen. and amen. Praise God. Amen. Read that out loud this morning. It's not my fault. Amen. So that's it. Brothers and sisters, see God's faithfulness to each and every one of you. If he declare he is your like he is your Lord, if you declare that he is your Lord and Savior, God is faithfulness. Actually, even though it's like he is faithful to all of us, but what more for us children of God? That we are here. That's why faithfulness, where is your faith? That's a question. Right now, a lot of things happening. Right? We keep on saying this. So like we cannot sugarcoat the word of God. We cannot share prosperity if the world is dying. Amen. We cannot share good things if the world <coughs> turns bad. Right? But there's only one thing we can share. The truth. It said, when you share the truth, and the truth will set you free. But sometimes, right? And most of the time, people doesn't want to hear that. They want to hear prosperity. They want to hear the easy part. Right? Remember, when you follow Christ, you will suffer. That's the truth. Amen? But a lot of people doesn't want to suffer, even though they're suffering slowly. With or without God, you will suffer. Amen? Actually, without God, you're dead. Right? But the promise there, you will suffer. Even Jesus Christ suffered. But he made the promise. This is, every time, it's a repeatedly message. He overcome all these things. Why don't we believe in him? Why don't we, have, we give faith on him? Why don't we trust him? The question is, what is, what is faith? Like I, 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 there's a lot of meaning of faith. 
There's a lot of meaning of faith. It says here, faith is trust, assurance, and confidence in God. It's a living faith. That's what you call it. It's shown by service and obedience to God. God will increase our faith if we permanently ask and draw close to Him. Wow. Is that the right answer? The true test of your faith is when you don't understand anything at all and still trust God. Amen. Amen. That's the real faith. That's a living faith. Because for man, Lord, show me and I will believe. But for God, believe in me and I will show you. That's the real truth. That's the real truth of each and every one of us. Faith is complete trust. Again, we think on no? faith is the complete trust in something or someone. Right? As we follow Christ, He urges us to have faith in God. You will find that in Mark chapter 11, verse 22. But our faith in God is possible and makes sense only in thriving relationship with Him. How can you give faith if you don't know? If you don't have a relationship with the Lord? Right? But sometimes we have faith with people that we don't know. How much more God? Right? Even though we don't understand the Word of God, but when we read it, right? He's the creator of the heavens and earth. He is the author and finisher of our faith. How can you believe? How can you have faith? You have faith for, for the person that you don't know. Right? That's why a lot of people get scammed. Right? Well, that's a test of your faith. If your faith is in the wrong hand, you will fall into the wrong hand. Right? But faith in God, what can go wrong? Amen? It is like the relationship that we have with each other in the family. But the most important thing is we don't we have a relationship with the Lord. Amen. Where is the faith originated? Trivia. It's a gift from God. It's a gift from God. Through who? Started with what? With whom? Abraham. Abraham. Yes. The message there. <laughs> Pero praise God. Abraham. Right? Abraham's name was originally Abraham. Tama po ba? Hindi Abraham. Huh? Which means what? The father is exalted. Right? Abraham. And his name was changed to Abraham, which means the father of multitude. The father of all nations. Amen? When God initiated his covenant with him, that changes everything. The life of Abraham changes radically. Right? Abraham plays an important role in the Christian faith. Agree, disagree. Kaya nga, descendants of Abraham. Amen? He is one of the most important figures in the Bible apart from Jesus. Right? Kasi akala natin, end na yung kay, ano eh, ay, kay Adam and Eve. No? The righteousness started with Abraham. It is through this lineage that the Savior of the world comes. Right? If you don't believe me, read Matthew 1. Matthew chapter 1. The lineage of Jesus. Or Luke 3. And no one can understand the Old Testament without understanding Abraham. It's a big part of it. Big part of it. For in many ways, the story of redemption begins with God's calls to his patriarch. And Abraham was the first man chosen by God for a role in the plan of redemption. That's why Father Abraham, there's a song in that. Right? Father Abraham. There you go. <laughs> uh, so the story of Abraham contains the first mention in the Bible of God's righteousness assigned to the man and the soul's means of salvation. The righteousness. And he believed. Right? 
In Genesis 15, chapter 6, he believed that Jesus Christ will come. Right? It was Abraham who God chose to be the father of many nations. Did I say all nations? Much better, many nations. And I believe he is the father of all nations. And God knew that Abraham would struggle with the call of, uh, set before him. But he also knew that the sin struggles would produce growth in faith. In faith, brothers and sisters. So what is the purpose of Abraham? The purpose of God for Abraham was to make him into a great nation. And God will, use, will do that for you as well. God will use you. God will use each and every one of us. Like I said, God is a user. Right? People will use you. But the best thing, the positive way, God will use you in your life. He will use you. Sabi nga, user. Na? Si Lord talaga user to eh. Pero in a good way. Amen? He will use you. That's why the example of Abraham is the father of all nations. That's why I'm sharing you this. I'm sharing you a part of it. This is an introduction. But in our generation, I will share how faith will move each and every one of us. So the story of Abraham is important for us to understand. Before, we only knew him through our subjects, through our school, right? But when you read Genesis, there's a big part, Abraham. That's why God used Abraham. There's a big part that God, the reason why God used Abraham, because if not because of Abraham, we're not here. Amen. Probably we're lost, right? Following God takes faith. Do you agree? Huh? Do you agree? Amen. Following God takes faith. That's it. There's a saying, right? It's real. It's a message. Without faith, we cannot please God. That's why following God takes faith. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, the Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. Imagine that. If I told Eric, Eric, move here in Halifax because you're too far. Are you going to move? <laughs> Eric, go in, this, in Halifax. I will give you something. I will give you uh, business. Are you coming? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> wow. I think you trust me. <laughs> but the thing is, if you come, my promise to you fail. Are you, are you still going to be happy? I will come if the Lord told me to come. <laughs> no, I mean, in personal. If you're speaking for God. No, this is my point. I'm speaking. Are you going to be happy? No. no. But if the Lord says it, remember, when you, when you ask me that, ask the Lord about it. But the Lord will use people. The Lord will use something for you to make your... Actually, I asked you to ask the Lord about it. Then you had that dream. Dream, yeah. And I didn't know you, you took it seriously. That's why it's going to be my fault if you fail. No, it's, it's the Lord. I believe it's the Lord. Right? Remember, the enemy will use you. Yesterday, the enemy is there. But praise God for your... Your patience and the patience of the men help you. See? That's how God will use you. That, that's how God will move you. That's how God will be in the meets. But the enemy doesn't like that. That's why he wants it, to be part of it. Uh, but did he prosper? I don't think so. Huh? See? Abraham more commonly known as Abraham, was wealthy, but this is the story of Abraham, was a wealthy man who seemed to have everything he needed and wanted in life. Same thing in your part. Lord, I have all that I want. I'm okay. 
I'm good. My business here is good. You don't need me to go somewhere else. That's why are you going to that place if you have everything in your life in this place? Are you going to move? But God called Abraham to completely follow and depend on him. Wow. Do you think Abraham refused? Question. Do you think Abraham refused God? Did you think God, did you think Abraham questioned God? Huh? You don't know, right? But we will know. See? Completely depend on God. Abandoning everything he was familiar and comfortable. That's you, bro. With for the chance to know God. And it takes faith to follow him. Oh, don't blame me. We haven't talked since, uh, what, three days ago? And when I was here last Friday, the youth, the, day, the question there, uh, if you, what's the second question? Are you, uh, if you are encountering this, uh, uh, but, but anyway, what's, what's the answer for you to, to continue, right? It is faith. That's why it's important. It is, I don't know. Lord, I trust you. Right? And part of God's plan and purpose calls us to have faith. We cannot do it because someone told us. We cannot do it because, ano yan? Uh, in Tagalog, suntok sa buwan. Kesera sera, come what may. Right? Imagine, you go a place that you're not sure. Are you still going? I don't think so. You will hesitate. You will think. Of, you will think about it. But Abraham, did he? What did he counter uh, God's plan? Did he refuse? That's why part of God's plan and purpose calls us to have faith. I believe. He has the faith because in verse, right, sabi dito, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you and I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. That's the Lord promise to Abraham. If I promise you that, it's a different story. Amen? But if the Lord spoke to me to speak to you, that's his promise. And this is brothers and sisters, the Lord promised, not just to Abraham, but for all of us. This is not what, this is not what I planned in my life. But when we sing this song, the song like earlier, how great is faith, his faithfulness, we will be moved because of his faith, faithfulness. And I believe Abraham didn't refuse. He didn't refuse to follow and obey God. Why? Because you will know that you will know that earlier, uh, later. He's a wealthy man. Everything, everything he has, he's, should I say, comfortable in his life. Probably he's thinking, why are you making me move? I'm okay, I'm good, in, I'm good in here. And but the Lord has had other plans for him. It's not about what you have. It's not about what you possess. It is what you have in God. That's more important. The richness of God in your life is better than the richness in this world. That's why I believe Abraham's faith is strong because he trusts God. He didn't trust in everything that he has. And faith is 
a call beyond ourselves. It's not about us. Like I said, Lord, show me first before I believe that it is beyond. Our calling is a beyond ourselves. It takes faith for us to understand that. It is faith for us to know that. And I believe, like Abraham didn't, didn't uh, hesitate, didn't uh, he didn't move. Actually, he didn't uh, protest to God, right? I think I have an issue there. I will make you into a great nation. That's the promise of God in most, uh, Abraham's life. I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. It is nice for us to know to, to hear God from each and every one of us. That the Lord's promise us that I will bless you and you will be a blessing to others. And I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse those who curse you. It's not important anymore. In this earth, it's not important anymore. It is He who is important in our lives. That's why Abraham obeyed him because Abraham's faith the plans and the purpose of God for him were fulfilled because of his faith his faith affected not only to himself but also to his family it affects everything and ultimately all the families on the earth that's why brothers and sisters that's why Abraham is the father of many nations our, his descendants is here. We are descendants of Abraham. Agree or disagree? Agree. Amen. Our faith goes beyond ourselves and affects our relationship with our families, friends, and others. But our faith in God, it will change everything. If we say that we have faith in God in all the things that He does, Right? For all, for most of you encountering troubles and hardness, even loss of someone, even the hardest part, the hardest trials that you will have. Is your faith going to be there? I don't think so. The only thing that faith is still there is for you to what? To be close to God. It's a, it takes a relationship to God. You still have that faith. That's why the Lord says, right? If you have as small as a mustard seed, everything. It says there you can move mountain. But the truth is, if you believe and you have faith, say to that mountain, you already said to the mountain, already, like, already move. That's how you give your faith in your, your in God. And receiving God's purpose takes faith. Amen. Yes. Amen. At first, God gave me this situation that I have today, this position that I have today. At first, I didn't believe. At first, I hesitate. At first, I didn't want it. But if you give, if you surrender God and give your faith to God, He will align all these things. He will clarify all these things. You, each and every one of us, has a calling in our life. Amen. Amen. Maybe not a pastor. <coughs> but we are. It's like we don't have the same calling. Amen. We don't have the same callings. Don't get me wrong. Right? Test every spirit. Me, I didn't, this is not my calling. But this is God's calling for me. Right? But for each and every one of you, God has a plan and has a calling for you. It's a matter of for you to understand it and to hear it. How you will hear it, how you will understand it, if you have don't have the word. That's why receiving God's 
purpose takes faith. If God has a purpose for each and every one of you, take faith. If God's really speaking to you, take faith. Like I said, if you doubt, check yourself. Do you have a relationship with God? Are you reading His Word? Because if you're reading His Word, and you have a deeper relationship with the Lord, you can hear Him easily. Remember that God doesn't shout. Because if He shout, all of us will hear. God only whisper. Amen? And it's a clarity, it's a thing that we have to understand. That's the reason why God is whispering is because God is always with us. God is always by our side. He is whispering because He is close. But for us, that we couldn't understand, we cannot hear the voice of God, we are the one who was whisked far from it. That's why Abraham, when the Lord spoke to him, when God spoke to him, go. See? Even in Abraham. What? He made, God made him to go. Imagine, are you going to a place that you don't know? Are you going to the place that you don't have you no know, idea or anything? It takes faith for you to go. It takes faith for you to go. Why did you go here in Canada? Well, you have your goals, right? You have your bis your your plans, right? We here it's like we came here in Canada because what? Better future, right? More greens. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're do if you're like that. Till now, well, there's a problem, right? Because your life depends on God alone. Many are the plans of a man, but the Lord make a steps. <coughs> and don't, don't hesitate. If the Lord's speaking to you, do it. If the Lord wants you to go in the place, do it. I don't know why you're the, the example of this, bro. Mm -hmm. Very clear. Very clear. Mm -hmm. Right? And the reason why you moved here, it's only because of it. Mm -hmm. Right? That's it. Period. Mm -hmm. Don't make any reason that you came here. Not because of me, not because of this church, but because of him. Because if you decided to come here because of him, all this thing will fall into place. Right? So I believe Abraham didn't hesitate. You know why? Because in verse 4 it says there, So Abraham went. Right? He went. Even though he don't sure, he's not sure what to expect in that land. And to receive the purpose of God for him and move toward an unknown land, Abraham needed faith. Even God needs you faith. Even though you came here in Halifax, your business gone here a long time ago. Because you established your business there. Right? It's a new start. Same thing with all of us. If we move somewhere else, somewhere place, it's a new start. That is God wants us to have. Sometimes God will use that part to go in that place even though we don't know. But if you trust God, He will bless you. He will keep everything that you need. So that's why the faith of Abraham is there. But it takes great faith to follow God. Amen, Puba. It takes faith to receive and claim the purpose of God in our life. Especially when He is calling us to leave what we are comfortable with. This is the problem of many people, the comfortability. Amen? When you're comfortable in that, in the, 
Remember, no one wants to have an uncomfortable life. Agree? Right? No one. Even in, seat, in finding your chairs, you're looking for a comfortable chairs. Amen? Even if you want to lay down, you want to be soft and cozy bed. Right? But let me, let me tell you honestly, following and obeying God is not comfortable. Agree? But He promised, I will bless you. I will give you this and that. But the problem for all of us is, Lord, I have to get rid of this to follow you. I have to leave these things to follow you. Remember, when Jesus Christ called the people, called his disciples, called the fishermen, come follow me. Right? Lord, excuses. Let me bury, I will bury my family, my relatives, blah, 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 and this and that. Did they believe? There you go. Let it be. If I say, follow me, follow me. That's what God wants us to be. If we follow God, make sure we follow God with no hesitation. Because His purpose is bigger than her purpose. Amen. Fulfilling God's purpose takes faith. Amen po ba? It takes faith. Sometimes, The purpose that we have, we think it's good, it's great, but we what we fail. But the, his purpose will not fail. In fulfilling his faith, his purpose in each and every one. It takes faith. Right? Abraham traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Moriah and Shechem. At that time, the Canaanite, Canaanites were in the land. Right? You think Abraham hesitate? You think Abraham doubted? Huh? Imagine if you go to a place where there is what? There is troubles, there is problems, there is people who are ready to what? Ready to kill you. Are you still gonna do it? Are you still gonna stay there? It takes faith to go there. If the Lord wants you to be there, make sure the Lord, you're speaking to the Lord. You're hearing the word, the, the Lord in your life. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, this is his promise. To your offspring, I will give this land. That's a strong statement. Right? He will give it. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. It means he served God. He declared that this land is for the Lord. That's why he started there and he became the father of all nations. The descendants and we are here. The promise of God for Abraham's life was too great for him to complete. Same thing with all of us. We cannot do it alone. Brothers and sisters, I cannot do it alone. That's why, what? We depend on God. Right? We depend on God alone. His purpose and His will for each and every one of us. The total dependence of God on God for the fulfillment and God's purpose to the promise for Him. So trust me, brothers and sisters. If you are here today, it's not because of one person. It's not because of me, but it's only because of him. That's the reason why we're so happy, we're so we're so blessed. We're blessed that you people keep on coming. People keep on coming. But like I said, brothers and sisters, <coughs> quantity is good. But most important thing is what? The quality, your relationship with the Lord. Amen. I'd rather have two or three 
than too many if that two or three are in the Lord. Because importantly, it's your relationship. It's a personal relationship with the Lord. But the thing is, we are here to share it to you. I will not change you. No one will change you. Only God can change you. Right? We can judge you, but we cannot change you. Only God can change each and every one of us. That's why your faith should be strong, brothers and sisters. That's why Abraham, when Abraham became Abraham, God fulfilled his promise to him till now. That's why he became the father of all nations. And what? The father of faith. That's where it started, the faith of Abraham. The father of faith. <clears throat> to all of us, faith does that's why how that's how enemy works. Right? He will make you what? Try to give up. Imagine that. It took you a long time for that thing to to solve. Not just well, imagine the it's like the moving, the travel, and this this happened, but the Lord is there, right? And the men were tested with their faith. The patience. Imagine that. Well, if you, we're going to tell you our story before, <laughs> you may not like it. But praise God for their lives. They didn't give up, right? I know they got tired, but like I said, God gave them strength. And faith. What? Faith does all, doesn't always take you out of the storm, but it comes you in the midst of the storm. We will suffer, kapatid. We will suffer. We're almost there. Faith is not knowing what the future holds, but knowing who holds the future. Brothers and sisters, who holds your future? For some people, I hold the future. That's selfishness. You don't hold your future. Only God knows. God holds your future. Amen po ba? It's, it's for us to understand faith is important. So we, we are saved by grace through faith. Faith, it's each and every one of us. That's why we want to build strong faith for each and every one of you. Especially for people who are struggling. People who are having issues in their lives. The more faith you have. Right? In any circumstances, you have the faith to what? To obey and follow God. Right? Faith is trust. If you trust God in your life, promise He will make your life better. When I say better, it doesn't matter what the storm will you, you will receive. Whatever trials, trials will you receive. You will make you will make your life better, focusing on the trials, on the problem. It doesn't matter. Like face, face we have to face our problem, right? But it's hard to face our problem if we don't have the faith in God. Because most of the time we do it on our own. What? Anong kalabas, kalalabasan? Burnout. Right? Frustration. Anxious. Worry. Right? But remember, brothers and sisters, our faith will be tested. And it will be testing for each and every one of us. Are we gonna continue to walk with God? If there's trouble, if there's, if there's circumstances, And I was tested, and I'm still. I, I was. I'm still testing. I'm still tested. Don't think of me that I'm good. Don't think of me that I'm better now. No. Every day, battles. I am battling all these things. 
And the more you get closer to God, the more trials, the more what? The more the enemy will put something to you till you quit. Tanda natin, the enemy doesn't work. Right? The enemy doesn't uh, take their heart. It's like his, his effort to win you. If he sees you that he, it's like he's with you. And that the enemy still is here to kill, steal, and destroy. He's just waiting for you to give up. He's just waiting for you to let go. But the Lord doesn't want you to let go. That's why the Lord have faith in your life with the Lord. Because we don't see it. We don't see faith. Do we see faith? No. We don't see faith. But whenever we don't see faith, we trust. We trust even though we don't see it. We don't see faith because we live, right? We live on it. For we live by faith, not by sight. Tanda natin kapatid. Tanda natin. Our faith is here, not here. But some people, their faith is in here. Whatever they see, that's their faith. But your faith is to be here. If you trust God, definitely your faith is with God. Right? Diba? For people, some people trust their possession. If that possession gone, what do you think will happen? Worries, right? Problems, issues. So I, for we live by faith, not by sight, brothers and sisters. That's our conclusion for today. We have to live in faith every day. Amen po ba? So that we will have life with God. Simple as that. Our faith should be there every day. We don't lose faith. What? But we nurture faith. Should be growing. Sinabi lang ni Lord, sinabi lang ni Lord na as long as you have as small as a mustard seed, but it doesn't stay that small. That your faith should be growing. The more you encounter problems, the more you encounter hardship, the more faith you grow. Right? The more you mature. It is the faith that builds you up. That builds your relationship with the Lord. But the thing is, you can't have faith if you don't have a relationship with God. You should have to have the faith to believe. You have the faith to believe. Saying to God, Father, teach me and trust to trust you with all my heart. Amen po ba? And we have to have the faith to receive. When we receive, the prayer is, Father, allow me to embrace your promises with expectation and humility. And we have the faith to go like Abraham. Right? Like him. Jesus Christ's disciples. Father, give me a grace to go when you want me to go. You are not here to stay forever in the church. You will go no matter what. You will leave no matter what. You're not here to stay in the church. You're here to grow in maturity in church. But after that, what's next? What? Sabi nga, di ba? Sa ano natin, no? Sa science, sa ano natin, sa pinag-aralan natin. Ano yung three, you know? Go, grow, glow. Same thing in Christianity. You have to? But, hindi, baliktad naman. We have to grow. For us to go. So that we will glow. There you go. That's why brothers and sisters, 
this is an encouragement to each and every one of us. If what if you think what you are doing right now is for the Lord, praise God. If it's not, surrender to God. And then only God is the one who will use us. Only God. God is a jealous God. He's a just God, but He's a jealous God. He doesn't want you to be what? To be idolizing whatever what you have. Only Him. Only Him. That's why God is a jealous God. But He wants you to prosper. He wants you to be blessed like Abraham. Sometimes the question, Lord, if you want me to be blessed, but why don't you give this to me? Why do you want to take this away? That's a problem because you're already stuck on that possession. On that, what, on what you have. Right? It is hard. Especially when your, your business is growing. Right? Right? Tama po ba? You're, what? You're rising up. Like the rich man. Then, it's much easier for a camel to enter an eye of the needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. That's why, brothers and sisters, I'm this I'm saying this. Let go and let God. Right? Don't get me wrong. And this is giving telling. Business is good. Work is good. But make sure, I will, put, I will say this again, make your God your business. Put God into your business. Put, put God into your marriage. Put God into your relationship. And He will make you grow. And He will bless you. Amen po ba? When your faith wavers, fear kicks in. Doubt kicks in. Unbelief kicks in. The enemy kicks in. The great deceiver. He is a great deceiver. When you fear, when you doubt, you are sinning from God. Agree? Disagree. But that's what you call the sin of unbelief. Because you don't believe God. Only God can make you grow. As Pastor Lowe's phrase here, fear focuses on the power of the problem, but faith focuses on the problem solver. Amen? That's why your focus is in God alone. Your faith is in God alone. But your faith grows together with one another. Our relationship with one another. We should what? Urging one another, encouraging one another to have more faith in God. My job is to edify you, brothers and sisters. My job is not to change you. God will only change you. But my part is to share to you, to edify you, to know you, to know, for you to know what the Lord is want to share to us. But the problem is, you, you just focus on me, if you just listen to me, there's a problem. You should act. Faith without action is dead. That's why you have to act, brothers and sisters. Amen. Let us pray. Hallelujah, Lord God. Today, Lord God, we just want to surrender everything to you, Father. That truly, Lord God, our faith is only to you, Lord God. It's only in you, Father, Lord God. That we will grow our maturity, Lord God. Our beliefs, Lord God, should be in you, Lord God. We only trust you, Father, Lord God. But how can we trust you if we don't know you? How can we don't know? How can I... How can we know you if we don't read the Word of God?
don't read your word, Father. It says in your word, we need to read the word of your God and meditate on it day and night. Read daily. Now, Father, I pray, Lord God, that you touch your people. They will not grow because of the pastor. They will not grow because of the leaders in the church. They will grow if they have their relationship with you, Father. If ye, they have a relationship with you, then the leaders, the church, the pastor is there to make it flourish for them. And I pray, Lord God, for those people that they don't trust you in their life, I pray, Lord God, this is the right time for them to give their faith in you, to surrender, to repent, Father, that truly without you we are nothing, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, your great faithfulness in each and every one of us. Thank you, Lord God, that you are our friend. You are our Father. And most importantly, Lord God, you are our Creator. That your promises are true, Lord God. You will never change, never ever change, Lord God. And you will never fail us. Never will fail us, Lord God. I want to share, Lord God, the goodness, Lord God, your goodness in my life, in our family, Lord God, that your people will experience all these things, Lord God. It's not just material things, Lord God, but most importantly, Lord God, the relationship with you, Lord God, because you are our blessed. You are the one who will bless us, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for this month, this whole month, Lord God, that we will understand the faith, Lord God, for your people and your faithfulness to each and every one of us. That they, that we will understand, Lord God, that we need to grow our faith more and more, Lord God, as the day approaching, Lord God. Our faith should be in you alone, Father, Lord God. We just want to thank you today. Just want to honor you. And give you praise. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So remember, uh, brothers and sisters, we will see each other next week. But uh, for men, make it 130. 1.30. Okay. Let's make it. And one thirty will do. All right. For the men, uh, stay. All right. We want you to be encouraged. So let's uh, call up the music team and let's all stand and receive the blessing. The blessing comes from 2 Corinthians verse, uh, chapter 13, verse 14. It says, it says here, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. May the Lord bless you and protect you. And may the Lord shine in you and be gracious to all of you. And may the Lord show you His favor and His eternal peace. In Jesus' name, everybody say, Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. We are also blessed. And let's now sing our victory song with gladness. Because this is the day that He has made.